Okay, so you got your hand out there with you. What I'd like you to do, actually, first of all, before we get started with class, is I want you to get together in a group of four people, or five, I don't care. Four or five people right now. If you turn your desks together somehow, people that are close. Who do we got? Karina, why don't you join these guys? Ralph, where are you going? You going here? I guess I'll stay here. Okay. Today is the 21st of March. Okay, question that I want you to answer with your group. You can turn over the back of your handout. Easy. We're all good here. We haven't even gotten into the real stuff, and you're already fighting. Okay, on the back, on the back of the handout, what is marriage? I want you to come up with, well, you can write the question if you want. But what does your group think that the definition of marriage is? Not within the church, just what is marriage? As a group. I want you all to agree on the definition that you come up with. Unless you can't agree, then I want to know why not. What is marriage? You can put sex. What's that, Brandy? Marriage. It's up here. It's up here on the board. It's up here on the board. What is marriage? Who's this from? Uh, that's from uh, Where you Hudson, there's the notes for today. So get a pen out. We're working right now. We haven't started actually. What is marriage? You and the group. Make sure your group all agrees. Are you in your own group? Okay. Got it. Got it. What is marriage? What is marriage? What is marriage? Do you guys all wrote your own? Did you not, not agree? Did you try and come up with something in common? I have to find everybody, everybody, everybody's statements. You joined everybody? I said it's a sacred class class. You can talk to the loved one and they're in school and they're in school class. I have to love that. Okay. Glenn, did you, Glenn, you're just, you're just copying it down? Okay. Okay. What's your one word answer? Marriage is sex. Why do we have a different word then? Why do we have two words, feelings and marriage, if they mean the same thing? Remember, Ralph, you're on the internet too right now. On YouTube. What is what is marriage? Marriage is feelings? Do you, have, do you have feelings for anybody that you're not married to? Do married couples only have feelings for each other? Okay, let's get together. Uh, this group over here in the back, Scanimal, Birdie, all you guys, what's your answer? What'd you guys come up with?
bond between man and woman. Okay? Sign of God's love. What if I don't believe in God? Can I still get married? Well, it's not in. The, I, I said not within necessarily the Catholic Church. Just what is marriage in general? Okay. I was just asking. The, I'm just asking. What else is that? Is there is there anything else? A bond between a man and a woman is a sign of God's love. Okay. For producing offspring. Any, helps who economically? Tax discounts, okay. Why would there be tax discounts for marriage? But I'm saying, why would the state give you a tax discount? They're promoting it? Why would they promote it? Whoa, 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 We're, we got a lot of conversation going on. We're supposed to be listening. Happier if you're married? I don't know. Okay. All right, we'll come back to that. Very good. Um, this group right here in the middle, Glenn, Hannah, Emily, what would you guys come up with? And Ralph and Rihanna. Ralph and Rihanna, the satellite groups. Uh, yes, what, what somebody? Between people who love each other. So can that be a guy, can that be man and woman or man and man or woman and woman? Well, we did not um, say, but we, yes, purposely So to leave that as an option? Yeah. Okay. Between people who love each other, what else? Consummated. As in they had sex? So the state... The state is interested in the in the couple having sex. Well, it usually would be. I mean, not. It doesn't have to necessarily have to be from the state. Guys, we're being rude. I don't think it necessarily has to be from the state, but most people probably do. Okay. Can you get married, um, and in the state if you don't have sex? Yeah. Okay. All right. Hudson. Next group, Brandy. Two people make a bond. And what else? What if I don't believe in heaven? What's that? Can I... What if they, aren't there? Are there relationships that help each other in life, even though they're not married? Okay, I, that's I know that's why I know that's what your group thought. That's no, I'm asking some. I'm just asking questions to think about. Okay, is it possible to get married to fulfill the requirement of marriage if I don't believe in heaven? Is it possible to fulfill the requirements of marriage if I don't believe in God? Is it possible to fulfill the requirements of marriage if I'm not having sex? Is it possible to fulfill the requirements of marriage if I'm whatever else, okay? Teresa, Ashley, Rachel, and Joanna, did you guys come up with a joint statement? Um, a vow of everlasting commitment and love to each other. Because God is the Lord. The vow of everlasting commitment and love. and love, okay, before God and... Before God in the world? And? Anything else? Okay. <laughs> Everlasting commitment and love. It, is this between two people of the opposite sex? Ambiguous. Why were you ambiguous? Because that is the world we're living in now. 
So your definition of marriage is what the world tells you it should be? Okay, very good, very good. Because the world is influencing you, does that mean that you have to, to take the same worldview that the world is giving you? Well, I don't think we are. Because the worldview is that marriage, whether it's a man and a woman, a woman and a woman, or a man and a man, that marriage is what God has given us. And that's what the world is Okay. My head hurts, but I believe you. Okay. Okay. What is marriage? That's what we need to be thinking about. It's a very important question. What do we think marriage means? Okay? I can go down to the Indiana State, the, the courthouse, right, and get married. Do I have to believe in God? Nope. Do I have to believe in anything else? No. So, the question then becomes, why does our society have the word marriage? Our society rejects many things from the church, right? Our, our society is not really... Our, our government and our policies, there are many things that the church or that Christianity holds to be true, right? That our society does not care one ounce about. Our, our, not our society, our government, right? Does our government require that you go to church on Sunday? No. Does our government require... What? That you go to confession once a year? No. None of those things. Okay, our government does re does have the word marriage. Our government does have the word marriage, and we have to ask ourselves why does the government have the word marriage? And I ask you that. What's what's the, what is your thoughts on that? Why does our government have the word marriage in its language? What's the point, Sam? I mean, it could almost be based off of tradition. Okay. Tradition. <clears throat> How far back does the tradition of marriage go? Very good. Since anyone can remember. Okay. Is it before Christianity? Before Jesus, were people married? Yeah. Yeah. Abraham, Sarah, married, okay, right from the very beginning of even the Bible. But um, So, it's been going on since anyone can remember. Um, how, how has it always been understood since anyone can remember? Why has our government, have all the different governments of the world, always sought to uphold marriage as something important? Andrew? Okay, so in our specific government, they've incorporated that because of the Christian background of the fathers. Okay, I go, I can agree with that. Why? What about other governments? All the other governments that have existed throughout society, the governments that are not a part of our society even today, maybe even not our, maybe even Muslim governments or other go, or other secular governments out there. Why does everybody have? Marriage and why does it basically mean the same thing since before anyone can remember? Um, well, some, some believe that marriage uh, existed because of women in order to protect women. Marriage protects women. Okay, how does marriage protect women? Okay. Andrew? Okay. Repopulation. 
I would argue, or I would submit, that it is common sense, almost, that marriage has been around since the beginning. It has been something that all societies, irregardless of religion or background, have had in their legal system for the purpose of continuing the society on. Okay? The... Um, let's see. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself now. But... Well, shoot. Okay, we'll get there. But basically, the... Um, so that, that's what we want... That, that's what I would submit to you. That marriage is there basically because it's been understood as the fundamental cell of society. We have a different word for marriage than we do for love. We have a different word for marriage than we do for union, friendship, sex, whatever else you want to call it. We have as a society a different word for something, and that's called marriage. And we need to think about why we have that word. Not Catholic word. Why does our society have the word marriage? Do you guys see why that's, we need to think about that? It's not, this is not first and foremost Catholic as much as it is something that our society has to, to um, we, we, we approach it from a society aspect. Okay. All right, you can go ahead and turn your desk back around. Let's start through this. It's important, I think, as well to understand that words actually matter. If you think back, maybe you guys weren't even born yet, I don't know. President Clinton, when he was a president, was testifying in front of a grand jury. He says, it depends on what your definition of is, is. The entire postmodern idea is basically based on, we talked about postmodernism last semester. Postmodernism is basically based on the idea that words only mean what I need them to mean, or want them to mean. And so this whole thing is like, if you, if you look at like the whole pro-choice, pro-life arguments and things that are in the paper and stuff, it's the fight is over what those words mean. So like, when Christians will talk about the March for Life in D.C., it'll be the pro-life march. When other people talk about the March for Life in D.C., who aren't pro-life, they call it the what march? The pro-anti-choice march, you'll see that. You'll also see pro- um, or anti, anti-abortion or, um, what are the other ones? Pro-choice, yeah, obviously. So you get, it's the, the, the battle now in our day, according to postmodernism, and I think we see this playing out, is over what do the specific words mean? So we have words now that are coming up for discussion that, that always meant something and everyone was just like, yeah, that's what that means. Is. It's the most simple verb in our definition, in our entire English language. Is means is, to be. That is something. Okay, It's the equal sign. But yet now we have people that can act like they're confused over that. Okay, We have the same thing, I think, starting to happen with marriage. No one would have even ever imagined that, that marriage would be up for discussion, but now it has become so. All right. So we're going to look at um, this issue as we go forward. Our society's understanding. Um, you know, why talk about this issue really quickly? All right. In my senior theology class, we, we we filled out surveys every day on our opinion about things. What's your opinion about this? What do you think about this? And and or we did little worksheets. And, and it never. I didn't learn anything. Okay. A lot of great people. Uh, teaching, but I, I frankly did not learn anything. A lot of my theology classes we would color. Okay, we'll color the Ten Commandments, or we'll color the Stations of the Cross, or we will do this, or we'll do that, or we'll play whatever, Jeopardy, Religious Jeopardy, or something like that. But we never learned anything. Okay, I think that as uncomfortable as it may be, it, you really benefit from talking about important things. And I think that, that it's good for you to engage important things. And Pope Benedict said this, look, if religion doesn't say anything about the important matters of life, then it's worthless. It's just a coping mechanism. So you might as well see, what does the church say about the things that matter? About the things that are really important. Okay? So that's why we're going to go into this. All right? I think the um, I was watching Harry Potter yesterday during the um, or on Saturday night 
It was a timeout of a basketball game I was watching, so I flipped over Harry Potter the last five minutes. There's a great line in there that I had forgotten about. The time will soon come when we will have to do what is right or what is easy. And I think that it is easier to avoid these issues, to avoid abortion, to avoid homosexuality, to avoid contraception, and to color. But I also think that it's right to talk about these things, to look at these things and to engage them, okay, and to stay awake for this class, okay? Um, so, 